Good evening. We are living in a world where our experience plays a vital role in our growth as persons. But in the field of qualitative research, little did we know that experience matters and experience means something else. Tonight, I will be giving an overview of a dissertation entitled Interpretative Phenomenological Analysis written by Smith, Flowers, and Larkin in 2009. I am Philip Jason DeFalsis, your discussion, and this is the introduction. 11 years ago, the Philippines made a major leap in the field of beauty pageant. Right now, our representative, our Ilonga Beauty Queen, will be representing the Philippines in the Miss Universe pageant. But 11 years ago, one Filipina made, made a major, major moment in the Miss Universe stage. We know that uh, Maria Venezuela answered a very remarkable question and gave a remarkable interview answer during the Miss Universe pageant in 2010. Uh, Mara noted or mentioned the word major twice in, in, in the interview portion. And that answer, that interview can still be recalled and can still be remembered by Filipino fans all over the years because of its significance for us. Now, in our case, if I ask you tonight, what is that major, major moment that you have, if in case you have that in your life? The answer is yours, but let us find out what is this all about and how it is related with our discussion. Now, we are talking about interpretative phenomenological analysis, or short for IPA. This is a recently developed and rapidly growing approach to qualitative inquiry. It originated and is best known in psychology, but is increasingly picked by those working in cognate disciplines in the human, social, and health sciences. What is this dissertation about? This is a handbook offering a comprehensive guide to conducting research using the IPA. It presents the theoretical underpinnings of the approach a detailed guide to the stages of an IPA research project and examples of high quality studies using this kind of approach. Now, let's try to dig further what IPA is all about. IPA is a qualitative research approach committed to the examination of how people make sense of their major life experiences. IPA is phenomenological in that it is concerned with exploring experience in its own terms. Philosopher Edmond Hussell famously urged the phenomenologists to go back to things themselves. This is a challenge of Hussell. And IPA research follows his lead in this regard. Rather than attempting to fix experience in predefined or overly abstract categories. Now, of course, experience is a complex concept, and we will be discussing it in a further uh, chapters throughout the book. But IPA researchers are simply interested in what happens when the everyday flow of lived experience takes on a particular significance for people. Meaning to say, each and every second of our life, each and every time of our life, it goes back or it falls down into experience. And the IPA or the researchers in IPA are interested how this a label experience means something more for the people. And this usually occurs when something important has happened in our lives. So it talks about major issues, major happenings that, that are found, that are situated in our own lives. At the most elemental level, we are constantly caught up and so consciously in the everyday flow of experience. Yes, it is, but true. We live every day and sometimes so we, 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 it is hard for us to, to go into detail what happens in a certain situation or in a given time. But each and every experience, each and every time, counts as part of our experience. As soon as we become aware of what is happening, we have the beginnings of what can be described as an experience as opposed to just experience. The way I take it, people would always say, you just have to experience this and that. But it really means something more. If you experience it, the experience your own way. So from experience, it really means something more. In 1976, Delta says, whatever presents itself as a unit in the flow of time, because it has a unitary meaning, is the smallest unit which can be called an experience. 
any more comprehensive unit which is made up of parts alike, linked by a common meaning, is also called an experience, even when the parts are separated by interrupting events. The way I take it, sometimes our experiences, regardless of how big they are, uh, it plays a significant role. It means something more. However, we cannot neglect the fact that our experience sometimes are inter came out from interrupted interrupted events. That means to say they are events that we don't really expect to happen or they go beyond our expectations. When people are engaged with an experience of something major in their lives, they begin to reflect on the significance of what is happening and IPA research aims to engage with this reflection. This is important and this is the, the, the thought of this presentation. When you experience that, what significant what is the significance of that experience? Or what role does it play to your life as a person? Now, IPA researchers might be interested in looking in details at how someone makes sense of a major transition in life. For example, you are starting a work, you're about to be married like Sir Jaffet, you are having a first child, or you, have, or you might have lost or you have lost your parents. So these things are major things in our life. And it talks about major transitions in our life. So an IPA researcher is interested on in how we go in through the details of the process of these things that we experience. Or how they may wish to examine how someone makes an important decision. For example, whether to immigrate to a new country or to take a genetic test, or this is very timely, to have yourself vaccinated. Are you ready or not? The question and the answer is yours. Some of these experiences are the result of proactive agency on the part of the person. Sometimes our experiences are brought about by our desire to do it. Some may come unexpectedly and are uncalled for. Like what I've said, these are the things that you that are that happen unexpectedly. Some are discreet and bounded, while others go for a considerable period of time, while some will be experienced as positive. Others are definitely negative. Some experiences are product of our hard work. Some experiences are fruit of the process. Some are positive, and again, others are definitely negative. What they all, they all have in common is that they are of major significance to the person who will then engage in the considerable amount of reflecting, thinking, and feeling as they work through what it means. So this is important that when we go through an experience, we try to reflect and try to figure out what it means for us. This attempt by the research participants to make sense of what is happening to, to them takes us to the IPA's second major theoretical axis. And it is informed by hermeneutics, the theory of interpretation. Here, IPA shares the view that human beings are sense-making creatures. And therefore, the accounts to which participants provide will reflect their attempts to make sense of this experience. We are sensual persons. We are sense-making creatures. And that's why we try to reflect on all these attempts and we try to make sense something from our experience. Finally, finally, IPA captures the dual role of the researcher. It provides detailed examination of the particular case and it is for relatively small sample sizes and data collection here is formed by semi-structured interviews. For the history of IPA, it started in psychology and much of the early work has, was attributed to health psychology. Since then, it has been picked up particularly strongly in clinical and counseling psychology, as well as in social and educational psychology. Correct me if I'm wrong, before the, the misconception of IPA is that it is associated to people with maybe uh, uh, psychological problems, but little, little did we know that as research has evolved, it has something to do with the research that goes on, that that we that everyone can be a participant because each each one of us has our fair share of experience, and each one of us can relate or can can reflect from our experiences gained. So it is not exempted only for persons who, who need psychological needs, but it is for all of us. Next. IPA is what can broadly be described as applied psychology or psychology in the real world. We prefer to use slightly different terms and to think of IPA's core interest group 
as people concerned with the human predicament. This clearly takes us to focus on people engaging with the world. We all engage in the world. And that means psychology in the real world. Now, most of the early work was in the UK, which interestingly has been a real crucible for qualitative psychology in the last 20 years. However, researchers using IPA can now be found around the world. So it's spread all over the world. Not surprisingly, more of this work is in the English-speaking countries, but it is also being picked up in regions where English is not the first language. That's, that's what I, I meant when I said it is for all, because each one of us are a fair share of experience, regardless of the race, the language, your nationality, or the country, geographically, location that came from. Now, how does the work, the, this book work? This book is composed of 13 chapters and is being divided into three sections. And what I am discussing right now is the chapter one. And this section begins with a chapter on the theoretical foundations of IPA. Section A is composed of chapters three to six. Section B is composed of chapters seven to 10. And section C is composed of chapters 11 to 13. Now, the authors of this book believe that IPA researcher does not need to know something of the philosophical theory which has influenced and informed IPA. At the same time, the key thing is appreciating the spirit and sensibility of the IPA. IPA is not trying to operationalize a specific philosophical idea, but rather it draws widely but selectively from a range of ideas in philosophy. And as a personal takeaway, based on this uh, chapter summary, I believe that our account of lived experience matters than one prescribed by pre-existing theoretical preconceptions. We, we live in, in a world of research where our behavior is defined by the theories which existed long before. But then I believe that our account of lived exper experience means so much more than the theories that were that were taught, that the theory theories that we learned before in our understanding of research and in our understanding of education and of life itself. Further, it recognizes that this is an interpretative endeavor as humans are sense-making organisms. We are sensual persons, or we are sensual organisms. We make use of our senses to feel, to touch and to reflect in every action, in every situation that we feel, that we see, that we encounter. So it recognizes our interpretative endeavor through reflections and through realizations that we find in each and every experience that we encounter. So that would be all for my presentation. I hope that you have learned something from my report. Should you have questions, my lines are open. You can email me or you can message me, or you can drop by your questions after this presentation. That would be all. Thank you, and may God bless all of us.